Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. It is Pomai Weigert, and we are back at another gripping episode of Hawaii Food and Farmers series. I haven't seen all of you in a while, but I'm back. And it is National Women's Month. And before we close out the month, I thought, why don't I bring on one of my favorite go farmers, women farmers, cool people, Priscilla. Here she is. And she is from Vida Farms. Yep. And we're just going to be talking story about all kind of farmer things. Welcome, Priscilla. Um, and Priscilla has a farm in Waimanalo. And how long have you been farming? Um, I started the Go Farm program in 2015. And I've been farming alone since 2016, so about two years now. Oh, and were you a farmer before then? No. <laughs> oh, oh, I just love these kinds of stories where just woke up one day and decided to be a farmer. Um, so can you tell us how you got into that? How did you get into farming? Um, actually, I knew Coach Jay of oh, the okay. Go Farm program mm -hmm. and um, Nora Rodley. Mm -hmm. And they were doing this Go Farm uh, function at the Waimanalo station. Mm -hmm. And so I talked to a few of the farmers there mm -hmm. and decided it was something I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. so. She's a Go Farmer, by the way, if, uh, <laughs> if you folks didn't already pick that up, uh, which has been really great. We were just talking um, before the show started about having access to this network of farmers, um, beginning farmers, small farmers, and people who are doing a lot of different things. Um, and a lot of people who have, have still other lives or came from a different life from before. So before you were farming, what were you doing? I'm actually a chemist, yeah. and I'm still doing that as well. So it's like my favorite thing about you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, tell us about your chemist life. Um, I work for a private company okay. here on island, a biomedical um, company called Igenics. Mm -hmm. So I think farming and chemistry go hand in hand. Mm. So they do. They do. Mm -hmm. That's kind of how it all started. And yes. did you? Are you from Hawaii, or when did you guys come? When did you come to Hawaii? Um, I moved to Hawaii. I've been here off and on about 17 years. Oh wow! Wow. Yeah. So, and I've been here the longest. I think about nine years so oh, far. Oh, okay. And from all over, or from where did you come from before that? I'm from South Texas originally. South Texas. Okay. Okay. And is your family still there? They are. Okay. Yeah. And then did you? come over with your family or did you No, meet I came your... alone. Oh. I came to school alone, um, oh. decided I was going to finish school, go to chemistry here at HPU. Wow. And I finished school in Texas, but then I decided I wanted to move back again, so I did. And found a job and here we are. And then I feel like you found a husband too and then a couple kids. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I have a partner oh, no. and I have uh, two boys, yeah, yeah, okay. um, a seven-year-old and a four-year-old, which he's on oh. the screen now. So. Yep. Oh, yes, he is. <laughs> yes, this is my favorite. Um, I, I recently went to Mexico and um, one of my dad's favorite movies is Nacho Libre. <laughs> and so like one of my big things, or with my nephew, he really wanted one of these masks. Did you find yes, one? and I did, I did. <laughs> and and I, so when I was looking at your photos, I was like, oh, this is the photo right here. This is, this is the winner. Um, and this is your youngest son? This, this is, is my youngest, son. yeah, it's okay. my four-year-old. So it's a, it's a family unit. Does everybody sort of participate in the life on the on the farm? They do. Um, my partner Scott actually helps with a lot of the harder stuff, like prepping beds and picking up compost and <laughs> prepping all of that that I don't actually have a lot of time for. Mm -hmm. um, I mainly focus on the harvesting, the marketing, the planting, and the planning and the records. And the right. So right, 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 right. <laughs> all the other, uh -huh. Now that we're speaking about records. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, definitely. And then. Um, there's also this cooking component that I feel like is really important and or unique to your guys' brand um, because you 
you cook things and you make different, I want to say value added products and, and food is a big part, I think, of, of how you guys market. Can you tell us a little bit about the foods you make? Sure. Um, we're actually doing kind of a farm to table pizza. Okay. Um, we do jams as well. Um, we're trying to get into doing other things like maybe an okra pasta sauce, but oh. at the moment we do do mainly pizza, farm to table pizza. So okay. Scott actually makes all the ideas. I have no creative. <laughs> <laughs> I grow this stuff uh -huh. and he will decide how it goes on to mm -hmm. the pizza or not. But yeah, that seems to be one of the best aspects of um, being able to have the farm to table um, market at a farmer's market because mm -hmm. people we're drawing in people not only for the food but for the vegetables and oh. we try to focus them mainly on vegetables and then have the pizza as the value added of course right right, right. sort so. of like as another hook exactly yeah like a hook to bring them, to in, bring them in. in and then be like all these fresh things exactly. take home with you and have in your life that's great um and then where where do you sell these things um we have Quite a bit of outlets. Yeah. We have, um, we just started a farmer's market at our Kaka'ako on Wednesday okay. nights okay. from 4 to 7. Mm -hmm. um, that's the newest one we have. Um, I also do my own uh, CSAs. Oh, okay. Um, I'm on break right now from that. Oh, okay. But yeah, <laughs> that would probably restart in April. Okay. Um, there are other markets we sell wholesale to restaurants. Oh. Um, Chef Maya Fett is one of my greatest supporters. Yeah, totally. um, she buys a lot of my produce. Um, we do sell a lot through Farmland Hawaii. Okay. Wholesale. Okay. Wow, that's plenty. It is. That's that's, that's a, a lot. lot. That's a lot for just you, your partner, and your littles kind of making it happen. Um, do you love it? I do. I love it. Yeah. Tell oh, me why I you love it. it. I love. Seeing those little guys, the little plants, like grow up and become <laughs> this beautiful flower or this this food that somebody is gonna enjoy. Mm -hmm. That's what I love about it, and I love growing beautiful food for people to enjoy what they're eating. Not only in the color, but in the variety and the texture, and giving out recipes on how to use that. Mm -hmm. That's a new thing we just started as well. So. Oh. oh. Well, and like we were talking about before we started today, um, uh, because you folks sort of, you and your your farm and your family um, do have this joy for cooking, and where where do you get these recipes from? Like, is the, like do you just invent them, or were they inspired by something, or you Google? How do you get recipes? I think it kind of depends on what we like. And then some stuff like uh, we were trying to move some Olena okay. and we just had to Google it. Like, okay. how do you make okay. <laughs> a golden milk? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, or how do you, um, some recipes, like uh, another recipe for Olena is just like chopping it up and putting it in a stir fry. Um, oh. Wing beans, we started selling wing beans and having to give ideas to people because they're like, what is this mm, This is a beautiful bean. Yeah. How do we use it? Exactly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Besides a Filipino dish or stir frying it. So. Mm -hmm. And how do you feel, um, how do you feel about your consumers? Do you, do you feel like a lot of your consumers who buy your things know what they're doing or you have to educate them a lot to to think, try stuff out? I think it depends where you're at. Um, okay. I also sell through the Friends with Farms Co-op. Okay. And I think their market in Kailua, a lot of people are educated on already how to cook their food. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, Kaka'ako, I, we're starting to get a more base type of consumer. Mm -hmm. And so we're having to kind of give people ideas on how to make certain mm -hmm. things or especially like the jicama we were <laughs> just talking about. Like, how do you... <clears throat> actually eat this jicama. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk so. more about jicama, by the way, just <laughs> at, in the second in the second part of the show. We're going to because jicama has been really on my mind since I since I've, um, you know, been seeing more and more, more farmers growing it. There's it's it's amazing the varieties yes. um, that are coming out and, and that there's so much more in food yeah. um, than I think people ever Really? could even ever imagine. It's actually so beautiful and creative. Um, what about some of the, 
What about some of the challenges in farming? You know, I, I feel like, um, you know, especially as sort of the, one of the focuses for the show today is sort of like women in ag. And um, do you feel like uh, women in ag is a concept that is is nurtured in the agricultural industry? Do you feel like it's harder for you or it's easier for you or it's just a real thing and it doesn't matter? Um, being a woman in agriculture, um, how do you feel about that? I think it's great. Uh, I haven't come up against much obstacles at the moment. Mm -hmm. I think more, uh, maybe it's just Hawaii that mm -hmm. people are supporting women in agriculture. I'm not sure if that would change as, say, if I was in Texas. Mm -hmm. um, here, I feel like it's much easier. People are more open to the women farmer. So, um, and it's great that Go Farm actually has a lot of women farmers. Yeah. <laughs> One of my collaborators is a woman, and I love working with her. So, mm -hmm. it's, I think Go Farm is, helps to nurture that just a little bit more. And even though there are male farmers as well, there are women, I think we try to stick together a little. Mm -hmm. So, and I, re I really feel like, um, you know, there, there are so many um, of the men farmers that are in support of that, or they do see how, like, um, it's, you know, women bring a whole different type of cool to the industry. They do. Yeah, <laughs> that is That is very relevant, like, right now. I feel like it's very relevant um, and, a, uh, and workable. So I, I really like seeing that in the industry. What about just challenges in general of being a farmer? <laughs> the weather, <laughs> I think it's all a challenge. challenge. Um, time management is a challenge. Um, when things die and you don't know why. Mm -hmm. um, the pest, mm -hmm. um, the heat sometimes mm -hmm. kills everything. Mm -hmm. But at other times you're rewarded with this wonderful kale that you didn't think you could grow or a beautiful purple cauliflower. Mm -hmm. um, so I think there's a flip side to all the bad as well. And yeah, the challenge just makes you better. And mm -hmm. you learn your lesson, and you just keep going. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it works out pretty good. I think so. One, well, I, I just even think that having that mentality of like, like moving forward, learning from the mistakes that happened. And then I think also like gearing the consumer to understand that real food, real things happen, like weather. And like, so if you want the freshest and the bestest, it might not necessarily be what you wanted. It might be what we have, you know, especially if you like the style and method, um, or especially if like they like the style and method of how you grow it. Exactly. Um, what kind of things do you grow? I grow a lot. <laughs> I grow <laughs> that kale. crop chart, that crop plan is pretty expensive. I have a pretty big. Yeah. I I like to give my CSA members a very nice variety, as okay. much as I can do. Um, there are some things I'm not good at, like radish. I'm horrible at growing radish, mm -hmm. but I can grow beets and kale and chard. Um, I've been doing a fresh herbal tea with oh. chamomile, or in the picture my son yes, was yes, picking yes. chamomile flowers. Oh, okay, and so okay. just trying to think outside of the box, and mm -hmm. I love growing flowers. Oh. So that's another thing I that's wanted to get thing. into. Okay, and so. then do your CSA members, are those the people that get those kinds of things? Because like, when you do for restaurants and you do like through FarmLink, is that, I mean, they're looking for specific things usually, and does your, do your CSA members, do they, get, I'm assuming, get the most variety? They do get the most variety, but I try to grow enough to kind of split it up between everybody, like enough that I'm going to sell at the farmer's market, enough for my CSA, and enough for my farm link mm -hmm. orders, mm -hmm. um, just because sometimes somebody doesn't want, like, 10 ounces of edible flowers, you know? <laughs> they may only like want one day. Like, well, that's great. We're yeah. going to have a salad of edible flowers exactly. tonight, yeah. guys. OK. But yeah, it's I try to keep the variety throughout um, for most everything. Like some things I don't, but mm -hmm. say peas, for instance, I may only grow that for my CSA. And okay. maybe, or for farmer's market, but not for farm link. Because I know, like the value and the time that it takes to pick a pea, mm -hmm. is kind of a lot. But mm -hmm. kale and lettuce are worth the value, I think. So. Yeah. So then you just make the call, right? Yeah, mentally, like, no, this is what is the best idea. Exactly. This time. 
Oh, that's awesome. Okay, well, we're at our first break in the show, and uh, then we'll come back and we're gonna talk future, what's next, collaborations. Uh, so we'll see you in a little bit. Hi, I'm Pete McGuinness Mark, and every Monday at one o'clock, I'm the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Research in Manoa. And at that program, we bring to you a whole range of new scientific results from the university, ranging from everything from exploring the solar system to looking at the Earth from space, going underwater, talking about earthquakes and volcanoes, and other things which have a direct relevance not only to Hawaii, but also to our economy. So please try and join me, one o'clock on a Monday afternoon, to Think Tech Hawaii's Research in Manoa. And see you then. Hi. I'm Ethan Allen, host on Think Tech Hawaii of Pacific Partnerships in Education. Every other Tuesday afternoon at 3 p.m., I hope you'll join us as we explore the value, the accomplishments, and the challenges of education here in the Pacific Islands. Living in this crazy world, so caught up in the confusion, nothing is making sense for me. a quick little break, quick little breather. We're here with Priscilla from Vita Farms uh, in Waimanalo, and we are just talking women in ag, farm pizzas, jicama, life, um, and we sort of covered how, uh, in the first segment, how how you got here, how you wanted to start farming, how, um, you know, sort of making that move and transition into um, you know, having farm life a part of your life. Um, but I was thinking maybe we could talk a little bit about the future and sort of like where where you see the future of, of farming in general. You know, just sort of now that you're in it and, and you're kind of doing it as a business, um, where where do you where do you think agriculture is going? What are your hopes? What are your what are your and even not hopes? What are you just you know? What are your forecasts on on what's happening? I think more people are starting to buy local. Mm -hmm. I mean, not even um, just here in Hawaii. I see it when I follow some of my friend farmers in Texas, mm -hmm. and that people are starting to go out, um, buy local food, invest in it, and what they're eating and. Mm -hmm what they're doing, what they're uh, giving to their families as well. So I think that hopefully more people are gonna be willing to not only buy local, but pay the price as well. Like mm -hmm. as a small farmer, I feel like that seems to be one of the bigger challenges, mm -hmm. like getting people to buy it. Mm -hmm. um, they usually do, mm -hmm. like and very few people like complain, mm -hmm. but um, I think we're in a unique space right now. So. Right, like really changing that mentality exactly. of of the worth, I think, of, of farming and, and what it takes. Because I, I, I do feel like there is a big paradigm shift and we're like kind of in this yeah. really neat, like we're right on the edge of it. We are. Yeah, so I mean, I, I feel very hopeful, but then I... I always like to check the temperature on other exactly. people and be like, are you hopeful too? <laughs> are you hopeful too? Um, and then as far as partnerships or collaborations for your business, um, are there other businesses that you're working with or um, that you like to team up with? Um, Rose Matthews of Rose Bear, Matthews? Bear Claw Farms. Bear Claw uh, Farms. We do farm to table, or we do farmer's markets together. Okay. We mm -hmm. collaborate a lot. Um, even for my CSA, she grows stuff that I am not good at growing or don't have time for. And mm -hmm. so I love collaborating with her. Like, mm -hmm. And plus, it's just easy to talk to her. And yeah. we can talk about things that are growing well, things are growing bad. It's like a yeah, great. Like a farm bestie, exactly. like a farm <laughs> friend. Like you can talk farm it's with community. her. Yes, it's community, <laughs> totally. No, because I, I feel like, you know, um, it's, it's these very specific conversations, you know, about 
like, uh, she knows what you're talking about. Exactly. Yeah. Like, so when you're talking about how things are growing and, and, and how things are going, she's not like, okay, you're talking to me about farming again. What's I have, going on? Yeah, here? what's going on? <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. Like, she actually understands, uh, understands what you're saying. Mm -hmm. That's great. Um, and then I did want to circle back around to jicama because um, it's sort of my own my own personal farm story. I uh, when I first got here uh, to go farm, uh, I went to visit counterculture, and um, Rob Barreca gave me a jicama. He was like, "Have a great day. Here's a jicama," and, and I went home and I was like, "Oh, I'm." I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> and hence my question about like, where do you get recipes and do you Google? And uh, you were saying that you eat it in a very specific way. Can you share that with us? We just cut it up and eat it with lime and chili. That's it. We just cut it up and eat it with lime and chili. Like, but there's a process, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Meanwhile, I was thinking we had to make it into French fries or right. like, oh, hickama French fries <laughs> or, you know, but um, you were saying to me that um, it's kind of, it's very refreshing, the flavor. Very refreshing. It's this, of the variety counterculture was growing is very sweet. Mm -hmm. has a sweet flavor, so I felt like you didn't even have to boil it to bring out mm -hmm. or to take away any bitterness from it. Mm -hmm. And so it's very refreshing. Um, you can cut it up into salads. You can mm -hmm. cut it into little potato chips and eat it that way. Um, just fresh. Make a dip, an avocado cilantro oh. dip. Dip it in. Maybe even hummus. Mm -hmm. And But I would say fresh is the way to go with this Fresh one. is the way to go. See, because I'm even thinking, like, there needs to be some type of, I, mean, I might have to start adding that to my segment where I pick a crop that, you know, because I, I feel like, we definitely the farmers that I'm encountering more and more. It's it's less commodity. It's very we have all these niche varieties, exactly. all like these special things that no one gets, which I love because I love having things that nobody else has. But then when I get them, I still don't know what to do with them. <laughs> I'm like, um, this is great, but can somebody help me? So really knowing, and I feel like like I'm starting to see jicama more around. So again, like this educational component of getting these new varieties and what to do with them and how to eat them um, has been really awesome. Um, what about the future of your business and farming? Do you think that you're going to, now that you're sort of warmed up in it, you want to stay in it? Yes, definitely. I'm definitely going to stay in it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure what the future holds. I have mm -hmm. one more year in the incubator program. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to focus on that and mm -hmm. just keep following my passion for farming. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I think that that's, um, I feel like once people start having this a part of their lives, you know, this farming component, um, it changes them. How, I mean, do you feel like that's true? I think so. I think you think about things differently. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's a big de-stressor. Uh -huh. um, when I'm in my field, nobody else is there. <laughs> most, I mean, sometimes they're like my fam my kids or my partner, but for the most part, it's you and the plants and your outdoors. And of course, we get to see the beautiful Ko'olau range. Mm -hmm. And it's one of the best places to farm, I would say. It really is. It's majestic. I mean, it's so majestic. I mean, you just took it right out of my mind. Because like, um, and you would never, I mean, I feel like people drive in and out of Waimanalo all the time. Yeah. But like when you're actually there and it really is Nora, I feel like Nora has explained it as like the golden hour. It is. Yeah, like it's um, it's so majestic to where like, oh, that's something really hard to give up, you know? And, and I'm, we're seeing it, you know, earlier on in the phases, you know, cause there's, you know, you do the egg school, so like you have it, and then you do egg pro, and then you have to sort of make this decision like, was that it, or do I keep going? You know, but it's it's really hard to give up that golden hour. It you is. know, even though it's really like golden hours, <laughs> <laughs> a lot of hours. Yeah, it's like a, a full time job. <laughs> yeah. How many hours do you um, think you spend on the farm, in addition to your full time job and you being a mom? And you, how many? I would say between. Maybe this week isn't as much, but usual it's 30 hours at least. 30 to some weeks are 40, I feel, just mm -hmm. depending. But high end is usually 30. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. 20 hours is minimal. Wow. Just to be there, to check on everything, to weed, um, mm -hmm. because, because everything's organically grown, we don't use herbicides. Mm -hmm. um, so it's... It needs constant care. It does. Yeah, it needs constant But it's worth it. It's yeah. totally worth it. Yeah, yeah. No, that's, I, I feel like um, just knowing that that is how people feel mm -hmm. about uh, farming, I think is reassuring, you know, in knowing that um, you're doing something that you love. Yeah. Um, when you're when you're on the farm, is it um, and you're thinking about what you want to grow or you want what you want to try next? Is there um, do you have a plan for that or do you just think, oh, maybe I'll try this? <laughs> like, like, you know, I, because I'm I'm more of a supporting role, you know, like I like to come and take pictures and like, you know, like taste, but like, you know, there there is so much science and math and planning involved that into like, you know, and everybody has their own method, you know, but like for you, how do you decide what you're gonna add or subtract? I usually try to think about um, my CSA membership and what I wanna have mm -hmm. for them to last at least three months. So I usually do an initial mm -hmm. three months and then I ask them if they wanna keep continuing. Okay. So I plan for the three months to make sure I have my leafy greens, my lettuce, um, whatever can be grown at that time of year since it's seasonal. Okay. Um, like sometimes eggplant's not going to do as well in the winter time ah, as it will in the summer time. There we go. And okra as well. So um, I try to plan around that. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes maybe the broccoli and the cabbages are not going to do well in the summer. So I know I have to plan that in the winter. So I do have kind of a plan. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I do try other varieties that I just want to see are going to work. Mm -hmm. um, for my own curiosity, so but I usually don't do that on a larger scale. Yeah, I yeah, do it on like, a let's just one. Yeah. let's just do a little tester <laughs> because we're not we're not gonna change. We don't know. Yeah, we don't we don't know um, where this is all gonna go. So if people wanted to find you, Priscilla, um, where should they go to find you? Where how do we find you and your your farm fresh goodies and your pizzas? Um, tell us. So, for sure, you can find me Wednesday night, mm -hmm. um, Kaka'ako from 4 to 7. Mm -hmm. I think it's on 440 Keawe okay. Road. Um, I do sell some products through Friends with Farms. They have a Kailua market, and they just opened a North Shore market. Okay. Um, so, there we you can find lettuce or kale or chard, things okay. like that that would have... Um, you can look online and email me. Okay. Or Instagram. Instagram and her Instagram is we're gonna be popping it up. It's on it's been on her info, but can you tell us what it is? It's at Hawaii.vida. So Okay. Message me there if you want something specifically. If not, look for us at the farmers market. Um the farm to table pizza is usually there and it's also on Saturday at the co op, Waimanalo Market Co op. Oh, yeah. Oh, so that's if you're great. ever driving through on your way to the beach. Yep. Then, then we stop. can get then we can stop and get that there. Exactly. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank it was you. a pleasure having you. I really appreciate um, you coming out out from Waimanalo and sharing your story with us. And okay, guys, that's an, we're gonna wrap up another another Hawaii Food and Farmer series, and we'll be seeing you in a couple weeks. Bye.